Hi, welcome to the Freeman Conversations. I'm Joe Bertolcao, the online editor of the Freeman, and this is another edition of Power Women, our way of paying tribute to women who are not afraid to make a difference. We are here in Iloan, soon to be city. <laughs> Hopefully. And of course, we are sitting beside the mayor of the town, Mayor Christina Frasco. Mayor, thank you very much for welcoming us to Iloan. <laughs> We're very happy to have you here in Iloan. We're very happy to be here and thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be in this series, Power Women. Yes, it's really an honor for me to be selected among your Power Women of Cebu. And uh, it's also very timely that we just celebrated Women's Month. Yes. And so I'm very grateful to be included in this series. The honor is ours. And of course, we just celebrated Women's Month. But still, allow me to greet you Happy Women's Month. Thank because you. as they say, we should not only celebrate women in March. <laughs> Before I ask my questions, your message to the Lilo Anons and to the rest of the Samoans. Maayong hapon, kanin yung tanan, ako nga kayo sa unang Lilo Anon o Subo Anon na po kayo na akong kalipay na nakaupan ang Freeman Tanong Adlawa and I'm very happy to represent Lilo An to Cebu and to the world and to tell you what we've been doing to improve the quality of life of our fellow Lilo Anons and to Give truth to our mantra, Live, Love, Liloan. Live, Love, Liloan. Can you please explain to those who are not from Liloan? It's a very catchy uh, battle cry, so to speak. Yes. Oh. Well, our mantra, Live, Love, Liloan, really speaks to our vision mm -hmm. for Liloan, which is to become the premier city in the province of Cebu that is an ideal place to live, study, work, and invest. Mm -hmm. and so we want to be able to mold our community into one that is livable and sustainable and most importantly that gives a high quality of life for our people. You are on your second year as mayor yes. in Liloan and if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I've read uh, some of your interviews before you ran for mayor. It took you almost a year to decide to run for mayor. It did. Um, <laughs> 10 months, I believe? Yes, it took months. a while to yeah. decide. Uh, prior to becoming mayor, I was very focused on my legal career, mm -hmm. which spanned almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. I was with Romulo Mabanda, and uh, when the time came that uh, our barangay captains and our leaders uh, presented to me the prospect of running for mayor, it was also very timely because when I presented that to the partners of the firm, they told me that I was up for promotion as partner. So it became a very difficult choice between my pursuing my own personal dreams and uh, pursuing the opportunity to serve the people of Milan. What made you say yes eventually? I think the call to service is a unique one and um, when I consulted my family about it, they did not tell me what to do. Rather, they told me to really look into what's in my heart and uh, examine what, what is important to me. And so when it came to a choice between pursuing my own personal agenda and career and focusing on myself uh, on the on one hand and on the other hand pursuing an opportunity to pursue a cause that's greater than myself yes ultimately the hard one <laughs> and uh, i think i would like to say that in taking the leap of faith to present myself to the public as a candidate for mayor it was a decision that came from the heart did it surprise you that your family just let you decide for yourself? Many political families uh, often set the direction of each member. Yes, it did not surprise me at all. It, in fact, um, they were very consistent with their position because uh, I never felt any pressure or compulsion from my family to enter politics. As a matter of fact, uh, they would 
always encouraged me to pursue my own path. So, sa sa yun na sa gingon ko ni Republic na ko na ipadayon o panikamot yun na yung pagkabugado day. Aro na yun kay masanigan. Uh, sa unsa pa yung tabo. And so, the quest was really to establish something of my own, out of my own hard work and achievements. And I'm very happy that uh, my family supported me all the way in my legal career and are now also supporting me as I have pursued this realm of politics. You, of course, finished your law degree from Ateneo Law School, where you were also team captain of your uh, badminton, women's yes. badminton team. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a, you know, something to take off the stress of studying, so I was also very active in sports when I was in law school. But you were already very active, even when you were in high school. I was. Yeah. Uh, I started playing badminton when I was in high school, and I was also the captain of our women's badminton team. Mm. Um, and I tried to pursue a well-rounded life when I was in high school. Um, not just focused on academics, but also on sports. Um, I was even a member of the Dramatics Club at mm -hmm. one point. <laughs> you were and the president, president of the, yes, the Student Council. Council. How did you manage that? Well, and yeah, graduating high school, salutatorian. Yes. Well, uh, I think that uh, there were a lot of opportunities for growth. Um, when I was growing up and my parents were always very supportive of whatever it was that I set my mind to. I think that was really key. My mom uh, set um, upon us this very high standard of excellence. Mm. And so we were taught at a very young age to never settle for anything less um, for yourself. Uh, on the other hand, my dad was also very supportive as far as me pursuing my extracurricular activities, especially sports. Mm -hmm. He was uh, there at every game. And so it's been this very strong family support that's helped me pursue all kinds of um, interests. Certainly, even before entering uh, politics, as candidate for mayor, you were no longer stranger to public service or the service in general. Aside from your exposure to what your family has been doing in public service, but you also occupied leadership positions in high school and even in college and in law school. How do you define leadership? How did you define it then? And how do you define it now that you are me? I think my view of leadership has certainly evolved in the past few years. And it has certainly evolved even more in the past two years mm -hmm. since I've been mayor. The common factor that binds my perception of being a leader through it all has been that being a leader requires difficult decisions. It requires the ability to take a stand and to be consistent in that position. And I'd like to believe that I practiced that even in the past. The difference now being that I realize that leadership should not be singularly focused on your goals, but should also take into consideration everyone around you. You are the mother of Liloana. Yes, and the ultimate test of leadership, I believe, is in one's ability to lift others up towards the goal that you would want to achieve for your community, for your town, and to be able to empower them, to make them believe that they can be better than what they are, and that things can be better than what it is. So, ako sa kaya na akong pasalamat sa akong mga kaisuhod ng Liloano na natagaan na bigayon na maging mo leader ko sa Milan because I do feel very blessed to be mayor of Milan as I found that Milanans are very passionate about the improvement of their town, our town, and they also have a very deep love and pride of place that 
propels Lilo Anons to be very active in participating in our programs, especially as far as community governance is concerned. Correct. And that's very important, right? Because I think one of the biggest challenges in leadership is letting people, uh, involving people, how do you bring them in to support your projects? Earlier you mentioned that the ability to make tough decisions or making tough decisions is integral in leadership. What has been the most difficult decision you've made so far as mayor of the town? Wow, that is a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think there have been several challenges that I've faced mm -hmm. as mayor. And um, most of it comes from perception. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that I've had to hurdle was people's perception of me. Mm -hmm. And being able, uh, not necessarily to change their perception, but being able to bring them into my beliefs and vision and my way of doing things. Being able to convince them that uh, I'm doing this for the good of Milan and taking a stand for the good of Milan and uh, really making decisions that would not necessarily please everybody, but at the end of the day will definitely be for the greater good. So I can't specifically point to one particular greatest challenge. Mm -hmm. I think there are many challenges. And every day, I believe yes. there's a lot of them every day. <laughs> so, they say that the worst trait of being a leader is indecision. Do you agree? Yes, but I don't think it's the worst. I think the worst trait is the lack of compassion. <laughs> because in this field, of leadership, compassion is very important. You need to be able to have the heart to serve and also to take into consideration people's circumstances as you implement the law, as you implement programs and projects, and as you make those difficult decisions that you need. Has the world made it easier for women these days? Well, I think we certainly live in a time that is easier for women than it was during the time of our grandmothers and great-grandmothers, where we're able to pursue our careers, pursue our passions and advocacies in a manner that is shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with men. But there are certain challenges that are still on the horizon, but uh, I'm, I feel very fortunate to live and to govern at a time where women in leadership positions is no longer such a foreign concept. Mm -hmm. Correct. And of course, your mother, uh, the former governor of Cebu, now sits as deputy speaker in the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you look up to aside from your mother and perhaps your grandmother? Because I've read also in one of your interviews that um, the two of them, including your grandfather, have told you the value of hard work. Yes, absolutely. Aside from those two women in your life, who else do you look up to in the area of leadership and service? Well, in the Philippines, I really greatly admired President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, who led the Philippines with a stern hand that ultimately resulted in great economic gains for our country that may not have been felt right away, but certainly benefited the next administration and our country for that matter. I also greatly admire other women leaders in our country, such as Senator Lauren Lagarda, for whom I was a consultant on women and children. And uh, during her vice presidential campaign, uh, it gave me an opportunity to go around different places in the Philippines to lecture on women's and children's rights. I think that Hillary Clinton as well has really raised the bar for being a woman in a leadership position. While she may not have been successful in her bid for the presidency, she has certainly paved the way 
for many women in leadership positions to boldly take that step to breaking that glass ceiling that can also really benefit the women and girls that will come after us. Right, and not just in America, but all over the world. Absolutely. You've mentioned there are still a lot of challenges that women face that we have to overcome. What do you think these challenges are? What are these challenges? For one, there are many professions that are perceived to be largely for men. For example, when I was a very young lawyer uh, appearing in court, my experience was that uh, it was mostly male lawyers. There were a few women, certainly. Just mostly male lawyers that really um, set the stage, pretty much, you know, and uh, showed their bigger in, in court. And so my response to that was not necessarily to cower in fear, but rather to make sure that in every hearing I came fully prepared. So that required me to study harder than um, others who were more experienced and older than me. Uh, but ultimately, it uh, I think it's for food. As far as mothers are concerned, and there are many mothers who are in the workforce, mm -hmm. and I can personally relate to this. Usagid sa pinakadako na hagid, isip ko sa kainahan, trabaho magid ka, is the time away from your children, from your kids, yeah. uh, the sacrifices that you make with family time in pursuit of your career. Uh, which will ultimately redound to the benefit of your family as well. So every day, it's a balance for me that I need to strike, as I'm sure it is for many women all over the Philippines and all over the world, to be able to handle your family life and your work life and to be able to balance both in a manner that will still allow you to keep your sanity Correct. and yeah. still be the best person. Uh, for your husband and your kids, and as well as for your work. Because they say motherhood is the most difficult job in the world. I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also the most rewarding. Mm. Liloan, of course, came up with a project. You came up with a project. Liloan Loves Mommies. Yes. Can you please talk about that? Liloan Loves Mommies was conceptualized during the time when I was the first lady, mm -hmm. when my husband, Duke, was the mayor of Liloan. Basically, it provides newborn care and maternal care assistance um, and education to our pregnant women in Yuan. We uh, give them lectures on properly caring for newborn and taking care of themselves as well. And we also give them free government services that include health services specifically for pregnant women. And we give them mommy kits that includes um, things that can be used for newborn babies. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the important aspects of Lila and Loves Mommies as well is that it speaks to one of the um, things that we always, we, we never think about anymore when we're pregnant or when we have kids, ourselves. No. So, Correctly. yes, so I'm going to take a free makeover, free haircut, free makeup. Um, in some years, we've also had free massage. So, it's not uh, purely um, health and medical services, but also pampering services for our moms. Moms truly deserve pampering. Absolutely. <laughs> but, of course, one of the beneficiaries of the program are single mothers. Yes. Um, we have a very strong solo parents federation here in Leon um, and uh, we're very happy that we're also uh, able to provide them with government services, not just Leon Loves Mommies, but we also have livelihood training services that we provide to solo parents, women, people with disabilities, etc. With you, we can say you're one of the lucky women to be having to be enjoying these opportunities that we have as a lawyer now as a mayor 
What about those who are who don't have these opportunities? How do you think in a largely patriarchal society like the Philippines still, how do you think we can help these women be unafraid to speak out and uh, stand up for what they believe in? Well, first, uh, I think what I've been able to do in the past 12 years of my life, from becoming a lawyer to becoming a mayor, has not been purely a product of luck, but also, more importantly, hard work. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunities given to me, but I've also really worked hard to achieve them. As far as uh, those who may not be as fortunate to have the same opportunities, I would say that there are opportunities out there. Uh, one only needs to have the courage to make a step out the door and to present yourself as being capable and ready to grab that opportunity. Here in Iloan, uh, we make it a point to be in very close contact with all our sectors, including our women's sectors, which is why we have a very dynamic women's federation. Uh, and so we try to make sure that we're able to hear what are our women's concerns so that we may be able to address them. I think local governments can play a very important role as far as providing opportunities for women. And in this manner, uh, I've tried to take advantage of that position by uh, amping up our efforts to bring government services directly to the people, such as the creation of our program called Dilo and Loves Poros, mm -hmm. where we go to the Poros of Miloan and uh, we bring the entire municipal hall to them, pretty much. Uh, and that also includes uh, free livelihood training for them. So we've made it a point to make government service equitable and accessible, not just for those who can come to the municipal hall, Correct, yeah. but rather we've bring, uh, made it a point to bring it directly to them. We hope all LGUs will be like that. <laughs> One of the women of the hour, perhaps, uh, Megan Marco, the future wife of Prince Harry, yes. said, one, said in one of the activities in the UK that women don't need to find their voice. They have a voice, they only need to use it. And people need to be encouraged to listen. Your thoughts? I completely agree with what Megan Marco has said, and I congratulate Miss Markle on her <laughs> engagement to the Prince. I think that uh, as women, we have the responsibility to lift each other up, to support each other, to ensure that these opportunities that abound are taken advantage of through us supporting our fellow women. I think importantly, kayo na yun, no? um, And for the men, on the other hand, uh, I have to give credit to many men in my life that has that have uh, allowed me to really pursue my passions and advocacies. One of them is my husband, mm -hmm. and uh, he's, a yeah. yes, he's a very good listener. Yes, he's a very good listener, like what my uncle says. <laughs> And uh, I think that one, what I would hindu kayo ba kay Teresa Cebu, for example, no, uh, the bar of equity is slowly uh, being molded in a manner that will make it easier for women to succeed. How do you make the people listen to the voice of women? Well, I don't think you can make people listen in the same way that you cannot force people to respect you. Mm -hmm. point, yeah. As they say, respect begets respect. respect. And so if you want to be heard, you need to listen as well. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to convey an openness to other people. Uh, I agree with those that fight for women's rights or human rights. Um, that's well and good, but I think it needs to be balanced 
with the ability to hear what the other side is saying Correct. as well. Because it's very important to have compromise in everything as a society. Because I think that's really the only way that we can all get along in pursuit of our goals. So the ability to listen, I think, will be important in one's desire to be heard. Um, I think I'd like to mention as well that if you have a message that you'd like to convey, you would need to have the courage to speak. Not necessarily to an audience, but even to just one other person. Um, to take that step, to convey what you'd like to say as a woman. Uh, there's a saying that I came up on many years ago that said that your voice, your work, should be the voice with which you speak to the world. And Very so, profound. wherever you find yourself, whether you're a woman or a man, do your work in a manner that does justice to the talents that God has given you, and speak to the world with uh, how you work and what you work for, what you stand for. You are unquestionably an accomplished woman. Thank you. <laughs> Do you think consciously of your gender when you do things, or as a factor towards success? I don't. I've never seen my gender as a hindrance to pursuing the things that are important to me. I think it would be more the people that I've come across that have uh, made gender an issue. Uh, on the other hand, I think there are many advantages to being a woman. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we bear certain traits mm. that are alien to men. No, we're able to wear makeup. <laughs> um, you know, dress up in mm. you know fashionable clothes and be artiba, art artist at Yeah. No, of course that's also open to men. But I, you know, I fully enjoy the fact that I'm a woman and. You know, I'm happy that um, I'm able to live in a society where uh, we're, we're slowly becoming open to others, tolerant of others as well. It's nice that you raise it up because my next question actually is, what do you think are your qualities as a woman that allows you to be effective in what you do uh, as a lawyer before and as a mayor now and even as a mother? Well, number one, I think, is compassion. Once I've identified a particular goal, I never pursue it purely taking into consideration my mental faculties, but I always try to exert my efforts uh, with the heart. And so, in the pursuit of my goals, um, Having compassion is very important. Having compassion for others as well is very important, especially in the aspect of public service. I'm also a very detail-oriented person. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since the time that I was you know, in high school even. Um, and that has helped me massively, especially when I'm signing thousands of papers mm, on a weekly correct. basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm really able to, you know, make sure that all the T's are dashed and the I's are dotted. And uh, I think that that has really helped me as far as uh, being a woman leader. I remember an interview we had with you and your husband Duke, in the past. Um, I think this was shortly prior to your wedding. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. In the free yeah. Duke yeah. mentioned that yeah. you, in the projects that you've done together, oh. you were the one who was very meticulous about things. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, my friends and family like to say I'm very OC, you know, obsessive compulsive with the details. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, for others, I don't know, but I don't know But ultimately, if it will result, in something that is excellent and, and beautiful, then why not? 
<laughs> do you believe in destiny? I do. I also remember in that interview we had with you and Duke, uh, Duke mentioned that uh, you bought to each other in time zone. <laughs> yeah. Because prior to that, you weren't talking to each other. It was only when, at that time when we exchanged numbers and started yeah, that's, communicating. That's true. Um, actually, I met Duke during the inauguration of my mom, during her second term as governor. Uh, Duke had just been elected as mayor, and so naturally he was invited to her inauguration. Uh, he was pretty speechless when we met. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have, he'll have a different version. But <laughs> the very next day was his inauguration. And uh, my mom was invited to attend. So, my mom was invited to attend the gym inauguration. And the day after that, we ran into each other in Ayala time zone. Unya alikri ka ayo kay kana uh me nana uh, he didn't have the courage to ask for my number actually. Um he asked for it, funnily enough, from my brother. Oh okay. whom he from whom he requested permission to Puidi Bahono Punia Kuwa on as legal consultant for Liloan style. So a strategy was in the works. Apparently so he, he, needless to say, he's been getting pro bono legal <laughs> assistance since then. <laughs> you have three beautiful kids. Um, one is uh, a legislative lady. Yes. Growing up very fast. Yes, uh, our eldest, Sophia, is yeah. five. Our second uh, is Liam. He's three years old. And our youngest is Franco. He's one year old. What have you told Sophia, if you have already, about men? You know what? We've had no distinctions really um, about you know that he's different because he's a man or that she's different because she's a woman or a girl. What we've tried to impart upon our children is everything is an equal opportunity game. If there's something that you want, you pursue it with your own hard work and abilities, not uh, limited by your gender. Um, I'm also very happy that Sophia has had a very good role model in a man mm -hmm. and a person of my husband too and also my family. Of course, there's my brother, Paolo, uh, there's uh, my grandfather, Lolo Pablo. The most important lessons you learn from your family, particularly your mom and your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Well, it cannot be argued that uh, mom has a great love for Sophia. Through her, when she was still governor, I was able to see and appreciate all our towns and cities and really see the beauty of Cebu and appreciate the kindness and generosity of at once. And for that, I think that uh, I, I would like to thank her for really exposing me to that. Um, undeniably, she's been through tough times. And what I've learned from her as far as that's concerned is as long as you're strong enough to take your stand, to not be swayed by the changing winds of politics, mm -hmm. to keep your principles intact, then you will survive. Uh, as far as my grandmother is concerned, and I miss her dearly, yes, she's right there. She's right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was a very strong advocate for community development. She founded the Cebu CFI Community Cooperative right. yes. in the 70s. And it has now grown into one of the biggest cooperatives in the Philippines. Right. Her main purpose being to be able to provide a support system for people in the workforce. It started out as people in the judiciary, mm -hmm. and now it's really anybody. She was also a former judge. Yes, she was a former judge. Um, she worked day and night to really build up the Cebu CFI cooperative and what I've learned from her 
is that it's very important to think beyond yourself and to work hard in the pursuit of your goals and also to ensure that you keep your family um, in your top level of your priorities as you're pursuing your goals. She was a mother to eight kids. Correct. So to be able to do that and to be a judge and to lead the CFI is really phenomenal to me. And uh, I always pray for her guidance, especially as I am now occupying this position that requires me to uh, lead a town of over 130,000 people. And be a mother of three. Yes, at the same, at the same time. time. At the same time. <laughs> what did you learn from the women of Liloan? You have worked with them quite a lot uh, since you were elected as mayor. Well, first of all, woman empowerment is alive and well in Liloan. We have a very vibrant community of women leaders, mainly through our Purok system. Our Purok system is composed of 231 Puroks. And uh, we have close to 3,000 work officers and members. Over a thousand of those are women. So women are really paving the way and leading as far as community governance is concerned. And so what I've learned from the women in Iloan is it is possible to be a woman and to be a leader in your community, to pursue causes that are beyond yourself and beyond your household and at the same time still be a good mother to your children and a good wife to your husband. Uh, that, that balance that I, I seek to achieve, I see every day in our very hardworking community leaders in Iran. Your 10-point agenda um, in your administration includes education, Health and Social Services, Economic Enterprise, Livelihood and Employment, Women, Children and Gender Equality, Good Governance, Tourism and Heritage, Environment, Infrastructure, and Peace and Order. Where are we <laughs> at this point? We're time? here in my office. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we are very happy to have made a lot of headway as far as the pursuit of our number one priority, which is education. So far, we have been able to serve over 6,000 young Iloanans and help them in their pursuit for a better life through education. Uh, that scholarship program was started during the time of Mayor Blue, and I continued it during my administration and added to it by opening up an athletic scholarship for students who are varsity athletes. And so if you're a, you're a varsity member, you automatically qualify for our scholarship, scholarship program. program. Yes. Um, we are very excited because this year we budgeted an amount of 20 million for our scholarship program. And I think that will really benefit a lot of our young students Certainly, as well yes. as their families. As far as health and social services is concerned, we continue to uh, give medical assistance to people in need and people in crisis here in Luan, whether that ranges from uh, burial assistance or health assistance, etc. We're also very happy to be able to provide a fund uh, in Vicente Soto and Eversley Hospital, where if you are admitted there and you're a Luanan, you don't have to pay anything because the local government funds it. Incredible. Yes. Uh, we're also excited to be implementing the professionalization of our healthcare system this year. Uh, that's a project that I'm very excited about. I think it will really take our healthcare to the next level. Uh, we're very close to finalizing an agreement with a very viable and uh, um, promising partner in this regard. So we're excited for that. As far as um, our other uh, agenda are concerned, We've tried to focus on certain areas of development that I personally feel uh, need attention, such as ensuring that we have inclusive development and gender equality in Iran. 
And so, uh, for the first time in our history in Milan, we were able to establish our LGBT federation. Correct. Yeah. Each of Milan's barangays now have their own LGBT federation. We have a municipal federation that uh, allows for our LGBT community to have a voice mm -hmm. in our local government. Um, not only that, uh, on the aspect of the youth, we're very proud that we've been able to establish, by way of an ordinance, the Liloan Youth Commission. Correct. And be an LGU that is one of the first to fully uh, federate all of its youth sectors. We have a very strong youth organization in the province of Cebu, and in fact, it was a judge the best youth organization last year. Um, we've also tried to improve the manner of governance here in Milan, especially on the aspect of ease of doing business. So we've done changes such as implementing an electronic queuing system uh, in our municipal hall, where if you have a transaction with any of our municipal offices, with a press of a button, you can already, where you're given a number uh, to be able to access that office. Um, when you have you free coffee and free juice <laughs> while you're waiting. While waiting. <laughs> We've also improved our taxpayer's lounge to make it comfortable for people to transact yes. with our municipality, believing that our municipal law is our face yeah. to the world. And uh, since we're welcoming our constituents, we need to be able to give them a comfortable place to stay. Uh, we've also try to prioritize the improvement of our road networks, knowing that traffic is a very big concern oh, yes, for yes. Metro Cebu that is gravely affecting Milan actually and is a hindrance to our development. So uh, we studied what are the possible road networks that we can pursue and improve on and uh, we've also implemented several projects uh, towards this end. I might be asking you to look at a crystal ball, but where do you think women will be in the next five years or ten years as far as welfare and rights are concerned? I think the Philippines is blessed with a very strong legal framework as far as the protection of the rights of women and children. What's important is the implementation of these laws mm -hmm. and for government to ensure that there is equitable access to opportunities and uh, the protection of women's rights. And so I'm very hopeful that in the next five or ten years, there will be even more opportunities for women to succeed mm -hmm. and there will be more women in leadership positions as well. Do you think we have enough laws for uh, that protect women? The ones we have, to, we have, of course, the government part of the women, the anti-abuse uh, and violence against women and children. But of course, you've mentioned earlier that the challenge really is in the implementation, enforcement of these laws. Yes. Well, there's always room to improve as far as the laws are concerned. But with what we have, I think there's already a good foundation from which we can really strengthen our empowerment of women. I don't want to be too political, but 1919 is just around the corner, 2022 is not very far away. Uh, can we see a Christina Frasco running for higher office or...? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> um, you know, being a mayor on my first term, I found that it's a difficult endeavor that requires a lot of sacrifice, especially when I think of what I had to give up to pursue public service. Um, I think that um, being in this position gives you a rare opportunity to help and to implement real and effective change. And if you continue to be given that opportunity, 
and what a blessing that would be. Certainly as a Cebuano, I would like to continue to contribute to the development of Cebu and to see it rise to its full potential. But ultimately I realize that pursuing any office, whether it's higher office or the same office, is up to the will of the people. And so, kami, ikaw lang yung mutanyag sa among pagalimod, dipindi na sa Diyog na sa katawahan kung hindi lang yung butaran or kung nakauyon magkod sila sa among kong anerdisyo. And so, right now, I'm focused on my position and giving justice to the mandate that was given to me by the Liloanans in the hopes that I will be able to serve to the best of my ability and to implement the programs and projects that we would like to see come into fruition in pursuit of our vision for you all. I forgot to ask uh, you this earlier, but what was your or what were your expectations when you ran for mayor and did you meet this, these expectations when you were already elected? Well, I, I expected the job to be challenging. I didn't expect it to have that much paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you have a lot of paperwork also in, in law? There's so much more here. Dagdan, dagdan yung kesa pirmahan on a daily basis, no? And, uh, you know, um, listen siya to be able to think and manage all of these working elements and be signing papers at the same time. I think uh, we can improve as far as our levels of red tape and bureaucracy are concerned. And I'm really all for uh, implementing modern technological changes, mm -hmm. even to our procurement system. Uh, and I think that will greatly benefit many of our local government units as well. Um, going paperless is certainly something that uh, we've been eyeing for a while. But uh, hopefully our loss will allow it as well. Of course, prior to being mayor, aside from being a lawyer, you were also an educator. You taught subjects at the University of San Carlos, as well as the University of San Jose Recollects. Do you miss teaching? I do miss teaching. Very much. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to teach for eight years. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. The fact that you're able to mold these promising young minds, the future leaders of our country, is really such a great blessing. Teaching as well forces you to always be at your best yes. as far as your knowledge of the law and prevailing jurisprudence is concerned. And I really enjoy the mental challenge of it as well. Are you going back to teaching? Well, if given the opportunity, yes. But I think that uh, my present position and uh, the schedule that it entails uh, would hinder me mm -hmm. from from pursuing that. For now, because I'm sure the law schools have missed you. I hope so. I miss them too. <laughs> Speaking of which, the bar exams, the results of the bar exams are coming out, I heard, next month. In May. Yeah. What do you think of the efforts to regionalize the bar exams? I agree with it, actually, because I think it will give an equitable opportunity to our brothers and sisters, both in the Visayas and Mindanao. Mm -hmm. You have to consider no, that taking the bar exams is difficult enough already, but having to uproot yourself and live in Manila mm -hmm. for several weeks away from your family gives you an emotional toll that can greatly affect your performance in the bar. And so if we're able to make the bar exams nearer to those who need to take it in the Visayas and the now, entailing less cost as them for, for, uh, for them as well, then well and good. I fully support that. How do you want to be remembered as mayor of Iloa? Hmm. <laughs> um, well, I would like to think that 
in my administration, we've tried to pursue inclusive and sustainable development. It's very easy to haphazardly accept all these tempting uh, proposals for uh, this or that development to come in to your town. It's difficult to take a stand and make sure that the development is sustainable and zoned properly. That's one of our uh, one of the things that we're very proud of here in Luan, that we've been relatively strict in the implementation of our zoning ordinance to make sure that the developments are really placed in the proper zones. Uh, as mayor, I've tried to implement that as well and to pursue an agenda that would not only benefit the present generation but future generations as well. Which is why, as far as sustainable development is concerned, we've been very active as far as the pursuit of our environmental programs. For example, um, during my term, we launched our Lilo and Community Action for Reforestation and Environmental Sustainability which brings the stakeholders of Milan together, whether it be in the grassroots, the academy, or the business or religious community, and um, mandates community participation in environmental governance. If I am able to leave Milan a better place than what it was when I came in, then that will certainly be enough for me a legacy to me. You've received, among others, outstanding Living Advocate Award from the Provincial Government, the Jerry Rojas Leadership Award from the Jerry Rojas Foundation. My question is, does it matter to you if your work is recognized or appreciated at the end of the day? Well, I think human nature will tell you that um, it's nice to be recognized. But I think what's more important is that the benefits of your work are felt in those that you're trying to help. So what's more important to me is that our people here in Milan are able to obtain the good uh, benefits coming out of the programs that we've been trying to implement. Thank you very much, and we wish you the very best of luck in all of this. Your message to your fellow women and to the men. Well, again, thank you very much to you, Jobert, and to the free men for this opportunity to be part of your Power Women series. Nako kay na kong lumog na maapil ni Amy in your series. To my fellow women and to the men of Cebu and all over the world. Um, I think we live in a time where we have an abundance of opportunities to excel, whether you're a woman or a man. What's important is that we build a community that allows for people from all walks of life to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. And I think that comes with efforts to educate, efforts to empower, and efforts to build um, a type of governance that is open and um, participative as far as stakeholders are concerned. And so I urge my fellow women and men as well to join in this cause to build a community that is supportive of each other and that brings truth to our goals to have an equitable society where women and men get along and are shoulder to shoulder with each other as far as the accomplishment of their goals and as far as our ultimate goal for our country, country which is really to build a peaceful and progressive society, not just for ourselves, but most importantly, for our children as well.
Thank you very much. Mayor Frasco, thank you so much for joining us today. Nagang kayong salamat and thank you very much for welcoming us to Lindon. Yes, We hope to be back. Please come back. Yes, we'll be happy to have you. <laughs> Our guest in today's edition of Power Women, Mayor Christina Frasco of Lilo Ansibu. And please watch our future episodes as we continue to pay tribute to women like Mayor Frasco who are not afraid to make a difference. I am Jobert Okal, online editor of The Freeman. Thanks for joining us and join us again next time here on The Freeman Conversations. <laughs>